morning, everyone. Please welcome our Perry Tech faculty and deans of education. Please remain seated as we welcome our December 2023 graduates. Graduates, please be seated. We have a special guest with us here today. I would like to recognize one of Perry Tech's Board of Trustees, Jake Junt and his wife, Karen. Each quarter, we host a graduation ceremony, and in years past, this was typically held in our auditorium on our main campus. But as you can see, some things have changed. One thing that hasn't changed, though even through a major campus renovation and a global pandemic, Shion Taki's dedication to making our graduation a seamless and memorable experience for all involved, especially our students. Over the course of the past four years, we have been fortunate to have a wonderful registrar who has worked hard on developing and executing our graduation ceremonies. And being that today is Shion's last day and final graduation with us at Perry, as she moves on to pursue her passion for art, I wanted to ask all of you to help me thank her for all that she has done. Shion, you will be missed. And today I'd like to begin by expressing how fortunate we are to have all of you with us today to celebrate this momentous occasion. 
Graduation is a special time as it marks the culmination of a journey. While we're aware of the many sacrifices made by our students, the day should not completely overshadow the sacrifices made by many of you in attendance. Whether you're here for your son, daughter, grandchild, friend, fiance, thank you for all the contributions in helping them reach this milestone. Graduates, we realize that for many of you, this has truly been a journey. Some of you came to us straight from high school. Some of you wiping the slate clean in pursuit of a new career. No matter the path or the motivation, we are proud of you for achieving your goal. So often sacrifices must be made in the pursuit of higher education. And because of this, I want to tell you that we are so grateful that you chose us. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce a very special guest speaker. We are fortunate to have this young man nominated to represent the graduating class of December 2023. Jason Gatchel is an electrical technology program student who came to us following his service to our great nation in the U.S. Armed Forces, including his combat deployment. One thing that has, has stood out to me after spending the past few months getting to know Jason is that I believe it is not a coincidence that he arrived at the decision to attend our school, as he comes from a long legacy of family members that are connected to Perry Tech. Jason was nominated to represent his peers today based on several factors. Academically, he has earned the President's Award for maintaining a grade point average above 3.70 and is graduating with distinction. Jason was also named an Outstanding Achievement Award recipient for his performance in the classroom and the lab and his demonstrated leadership skills and attendance. And speaking of attendance, he is also graduating today with a perfect attendance record. Jason never missed a day over the course of his two years at Perry, which is remarkable. According to his instructors, one of the biggest impressions made was his professionalism. While never complaining and always asking good questions, Jason is the only student student safety officer to serve two terms. Jason also did a lot for his fellow classmates, from serving as a tutor to finding a way to make safety videos engaging. He was described as an all-around honorable guy. Please join me this morning in welcoming a U.S. Army combat veteran and today's student speaker from Natchez, Mr. Jason Gatchel. Thank you, President Cody. Change is a necessary evil. Pinned to my father's toolbox at work was a Frank Zappa quote. Without deviation from the norm, progress is not possible. And I would like to add to that by saying, without adaptability, progress itself is not possible. When I was 18 years old, I instituted a major change in my life, going from being a sheltered homeschooler to joining the Army because I had a strong desire to improve who I was and I needed a purpose in my life. I found that without a defined purpose, my existence was trivial. So I raised my right hand and off I went to basic combat training. 
I was physically fit going through basic training, and I never struggled with the smoke sessions, as the Army calls it, which are basically intense exercises while getting yelled at. What I did have to unexpectedly deal with was being homesick, as I'm sure many of you who have traveled to attend Perry are, have also dealt with. I learned to adapt and overcome homesickness by becoming closer to the Lord, making friends, and realizing that that was the path I had chosen to attain purpose in my life. I wasn't nearly the best soldier at the range, and I didn't have the highest PT scores, but I got promoted at the end of basic training because of my willingness to change and to do what's right, even when it didn't benefit me. After basic training, the Army sent me to Arizona for seven months to become an imagery analyst. It was there, while in the military school, that I once again felt like my life didn't have a purpose. I thought that because everything we did was only simulated, I wasn't contributing anything to the Army. It wasn't until I was older that I realized that by working hard and paying attention in class made me a better and more reliable soldier once I got into the regular Army. This can easily apply to our time here at Perry. Even though we spent days on seemingly meaningless tasks, such as labs that get torn apart in 30 minutes, or worked on papers for weeks just to forget about them once we turn them in, we learned valuable skills and gained knowledge that will benefit our future employers. Once I completed my training in Arizona, I got assigned to my permanent duty station at Fort Wainwright, Alaska. After I'd been there about a year, my brigade deployed to Iraq, and I found myself on a little base in Baghdad. When I landed in Baghdad, I was informed I was going to be an Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance Tactical Controller, or ITC for short. I had no idea what an ITC was, so my counterpart and I had to quickly learn and adapt to this new job while running live missions. During my deployment, I struggled most with adapting to failure. Nobody likes failing, but clarity comes through failure. I've also begun to see criticism as a positive thing, not a negative thing. The book of Proverbs says, whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. The more I owned my own mistakes and fixed areas I was criticized in, the more responsibility my leadership placed on my shoulders. I got back stateside during the pandemic so instead of the hero's welcome you usually see, we got placed in quarantine for two weeks. I really started using this time to explore what I wanted to do with my life once I got out of the Army. I only ever wanted to serve four years before transitioning back to civilian life. Due to a lot of desk work in the Army, I knew I wanted another change in my life, one that included working with my hands. So the trade seemed like the best fit for me. Also, my family had a lot of influence on my choice to attend Perry because so many of them are Perry alumni as well. My grandfather taught instrumentation here in the 80s. My father graduated from automotive. My sister graduated from instrumentation. My uncle graduated from telecommunications. And my cousins have graduated from HVAC as well as precision machining and manufacturing. I knew I wanted to do something no one else in my family had done, and I've always been fascinated with electricity. So I really started looking at the electrical technology program. Before Perry, I had no idea how something as simple as a switch worked, and found myself always curious to why we grounded our military equipment. As my separation from the Army drew near, preparing for Perry happened at the same time as the pandemic, which meant watching the virtual tours and trying to figure out everything remotely. After some deliberation, I found my next purpose in life by officially choosing to attend the electrical technology program. Through struggles and hard work, my classmates and I have learned skills and gained knowledge that will help us in the electrical trade for the rest of our careers, and I couldn't be happier with my decision. Looking towards the future, we've had some opposition in our paths to finding jobs. New electrical laws have local companies adapting to make their own apprenticeship pathways for us. Combining this with construction projects slowing during this time of year, I feel like there is once again an excellent opportunity to demonstrate we are capable of adapting. I believe if we practice the integrity and adaptability that we've experienced here at Perry, 
any company will benefit from the skills we've learned. I'd like to take this opportunity to give the thanks to those who have helped me along my way. First and foremost, I want to thank the Lord for giving us the strength and fortitude to graduate today. My seven years as an adult have only strengthened my relationship and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my lovely fiance for supporting me so much throughout my time here at Perry. I thank my mother and father for doing so much for me in my life. I'd like to thank my siblings. I followed my brother's footsteps by joining the army and I followed my sister's footsteps by attending Perry. Special thanks to Doug, Matt, Forrest, Matt Ginn, Robert, Ron, Jerome, Travis, and Nick for being great instructors. I'd also like to thank Dan Lovestrand for giving me ample opportunities to respond positively to criticism. <laughs> Keith Butler for instilling in me an invaluable safety mindset. And to Adam Riker and Kevin Booz for teaching us how to represent and promote Perry's value with local contractors throughout the E7 class and E1 class. I'd also like to thank the rest of Perry's staff, security, grounds and maintenance crew, and custodial staff who keep our campus running efficiently and create a beautiful place for us to come and learn. And finally, I'm grateful for my classmates who have graciously put up with my terrible jokes for the past two years. <laughs> As we conclude our time here at Perry Technical Institute, I'd like to share these final thoughts. If you're struggling to find purpose, then first discover your values and passions. Knowing what you value and have passion for is paramount in finding your purpose. Congratulations, everyone. You've earned it. Thank you. Let's hear it one more time for Jason. And Jason, thank you so much for sharing your heartfelt and genuine message with us today. We're very proud of you. At this time, I'd like to ask our Vice President of Academic Affairs, Nathan Hull, to come up and lead us through the presentation of certificates. Thanks, Christine, and thank you all for being here today. This is the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to give out the uh, certificates of completion to all these amazing graduates. We're going to start uh, by welcoming up the faculty for the Automotive Technology Program. Come on up. Ron Dexter, Isaac Espinoza, Michael Powell, and our department head, Dusty Morrill. That's unfortunate that I got to follow that speech. Good job, sir. <laughs> I'd like to recognize uh, the shops that offered uh, externship and also job opportunity for these graduates. Uh, Streetcar Clinic, McCurley Subaru, Keller Ford, Mattawa Tire Service, Autometrics, uh, BBL Auto Sales, Walmart Auto Care Center, Bud Clary Toyota, Steve Hahn Auto Group, C-Spec Motors, Harvest Honda, and Yakima Nation Farms. All great places to take your cars to because we got Perry grads working there, so I know they'll do good for you. So night class, this is probably one of our hardest working night classes. Um, a lot of these people here work full-time jobs, um, raising some kids and also coming to school full time. So their dedication definitely shows. I'd like to recognize one student that wasn't able to make it to graduation, Luis Garcia. And now our graduates, Mark Berrion. Jaime Elwell. 
Anthony Gonzalez. Carlos Hernandez. Good job, sir. Anthony Hutron. Marco Lopez. Esteban Manzino. Christopher Minchu. Alvaro Pablo Sanchez Ortiz. Anthony Porter. Salvador Rodriguez. And Sarah Shanneman. Auto grads, on behalf of the auto staff, I want to thank you guys for choosing Perry Tech's automotive department. Um, go out there, do amazing things. We look forward to hearing from you guys and uh, be awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Dusty. Before I introduce the faculty for this next program, I would be remiss if I didn't share a quick story. Um, I had the wonderful opportunity to get back in the classroom this year full-time in January, from January to March, and they placed me with a class of students, and I was excited because I, I love teaching. Um, and I didn't know how much I was going to enjoy this group of students, and I really did. And about two months ago, they started bugging me about my graduation speech. They said, do you have your speech ready? And I said, no, I don't. And I decided I'd share one quick story about this group of business technology graduates. Uh, we had a project where half of them were union representatives and half of them were employees. And they took this, took this project very seriously. They debated and they, ne they negotiated. And they had to come to a resolution. But by the end of the negotiation, I thought they were never going to talk to each other again. <laughs> and I thought, what did I do to this class? But luckily, they did talk to each other again. And it just showed me how seriously they took their education and how much it meant to them. And every day they showed up with that same attitude. And I have a lot of respect for all of you. Congratulations on your graduation today. So So at this time, I'd like to welcome up the faculty for this program, Mardell Newhouse, Tori Bauer, and our department head, Valerie Ryan. What an exciting day. Thank you for being here, everyone. We are so excited to award Associate of Applied Science degrees in Business Technology and Accounting to this fantastic group of graduates. You all worked so hard to get here. Congratulations, you did it. Mardell and Tori and Mr. Hole and I were honored to be your instructors um, for the past 18 months. And this group will be remembered for a few certain things, other than this one that uh, Mr. Hole shared. but. Uh, one of them is celebrating each other. A lot of celebrations in this class, a lot of parties. Um, and then also for how excited they were to get to work. As a whole, they started job searching and securing their jobs and their externships earlier than any other class we've seen. We're so proud of the work that you've put into your studies and more recently in the workplace. And we wish you the absolute best in your careers. I'd like to start by recognizing one graduate who was unable to be here today, Rosa Navarrete. And now, congratulations to Roxanne Alvarado.
Rosario Alvarez. <laughs> Kayla Baker. <laughs> Jessa Carter. Caitlin Guzman. Luz Lozano. Sonia Navarrete. Kaylee Olney. Thank you. Denise Ramirez. <laughs> Last but not least, Danielle Sharp. <laughs> Once again, congrats to all our grads. Next, I'm going to welcome up the faculty for our electrical technology program. Travis Roan, Nick Marnie, Jerome Cobain, Dan Lovestrand, Ron Zyke, Kevin Booz, uh, Keith Butler, Robert McChesney, Josh Jackson, and Doug Jenkins. I uh, also have Jim Gabbard here next to me and our department head, Matthew Boynton. I'm going to start by thanking everyone for being here today to help us celebrate. Congratulations to all the graduates. Uh, today's a little bittersweet for me. I had the pleasure of being this class's instructor for not one, but two classes. So I had a chance to work with them and get to know them a little better than most. Um, so I really enjoyed those two quarters. And as happy as I am for you to graduate, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed. I won't see you around campus anymore. I'll get over it. <laughs> no, really happy for you guys. Uh, I could tell you a lot of stories about this group, uh, but one that I would like to talk about is just acknowledge this group set a department record. Just yesterday, we had our 13th 01 Washington State Administrator, uh, which blew the old record out of the water, if I'm correct, by a couple, right? <clears throat> so this is a license given by the state of Washington, and to get it, you have to pass an intense seven-hour, three-section test. So to have 13 of these graduates get that is a big accomplishment and uh, should be commended. <laughs> they encouraged each other, they helped each other study, and it really showed the bond that they had uh, developed over the two years. And, I really think that whoever's lucky enough to hire any of you is not only getting a great electrician, but a better person. So congratulations, and uh, thank you so much for all your hard work over the last two years. Uh, we have three graduates who won't be on stage today, but we want to uh, acknowledge Taylor Hall Ritchie, Hector Negrete, and Miles Wyatt. And now for our electrical graduates, Riley Eshelman. Good job, Riley. Mr. Jason Gatchel. Nice job, Mr. President. Alejandro Gutierrez. Miguel Gutierrez. Good job, Miguel. Michael Heidel. Good job, Michael. 
Linda Hernandez Cruz. Congratulations, Linda. Darian Jack. Nice job, Darian. Peyton Lake. Good job. Dylan Moran. Nice job, Dylan. Salvador Ojeda Jr. Nice job, Sal. Miguel Palma. Nice job, Miguel. Enrique Palma. Nice job. Victor Resendez. Jason Sager. Good job, Jason. Good job. Mr. Gene Schur. There you go, Gene. Thank you. Nice job. Alejandro Terrazas. And Alexander Valdez. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Congratulations, graduates. Look forward to hearing from you, hopefully, in the future on what you do with your career. Let us continue to celebrate your successes moving forward. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Next, I'll welcome up the faculty for our heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration technology program. Jairo Torres, Salvador Rubio, and Ryan Hofford, our department, department head. All right. Well, congratulations. That's where I want to start. Uh, it's an exciting day. We have a total of 15 graduates in our program. Not all were able to make it due to employment obligations. Uh, but what, what I can say about this class is uh, just honestly the, the brotherhood that they were able to form and share, the, the cohesiveness of the group. They were so diverse uh, day one coming in. I, I was able to get them day one of the class, and uh, all it started was with one little laugh about a weekend. And ever since, and they just formed a bond that you just don't see very often with each class. And you know, it's it's a bittersweet to see you all go, but uh, congratulations! You're going to be missed on campus, but your employers are going to be happy to have each and every one of you. And I would be happy to work with you, all in industry. So we do have uh, a couple that couldn't make it today. Uh, we have Christian Calva, William Dallas Long. Nathan Hansen, Nathaniel Wesley Whalen, and Christian Prieto. First, we have Ricardo Bolanos. Abad Contreras. George Espinoza. George, happy. Kevin Ferran. Good 
Kevin, congratulations. Alexander Jezdal. Alex. Christian Hawkins. Jose Hernandez. Jose. Moises Mandergal. Moises. Thank you. You're welcome. Freddie Mendoza. Good job, Freddie. And Jared Vila. Congratulations. Next, I'll welcome the faculty up for our Information Technology and Communication Systems program. Matt Sun, Joseph Hewitt, Francisco Magana, and our department head, Andy Fisher. Very good, thank you, Nathan. Well, well, well. Whew. Yeah, just take it all in, right? Take a step back, look at everybody that's here. <laughs> this is a great moment, great moment. Well, on behalf of myself and the ITCS faculty, we'd like to congratulate this class, um, last graduating class of ITCS for 2023. Um, they are small, but they are mighty. Um, all of them are here today, all 13 of them. Um, they did not start with 13. Um, it can be a difficult road. Uh, there's a, a, a saying that uh, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Um, so you definitely have to put in the work to be successful, and that's what these 13 graduates um, have done over the last two years. So we definitely congratulate them, um, and they're going to do wonderful things. We'd also like to thank and congratulate everybody else, all the support staff um, that all these graduates have, their family, uh, their loved ones. Um, it takes uh, a sacrifice um, a lot of times on your end, too, uh, to to get them through um, all of these programs, so we, uh, we appreciate you as well. All right, let's get this started. Mr. Jacob Biggers. David Coleman. Miguel Flores. Vincent Gasca. Mr. Giovanni Guillen. Alexander Guterres. Kevin Guzman Flores. Mr. Bryce Lang. Christopher Lopez. Andres Lozano. Saul Macias. Yeah. 
Colin Palladino. And Mr. Alexander Snyder. Once again, congratulations to everyone uh, that is here. Um, happy holidays to you all. And one last for the class. Go to work! Go to work. <laughs> time to get to work. <laughs> For our final program today, I'm going to welcome the faculty for our Instrumentation and Industrial Automation Technology Program. Max York, Jerry Reese, Larry Dagdagan, Casey Florine, Cody Pittner, and our department head, Tony Nurk. Well, as it's been said, uh, first of all, on behalf of the instrumentation uh, instructional staff, all of us uh, would like to congratulate not only our instrumentation uh, graduating class, but all of our uh, graduates today. All of you have worked uh, diligently, and you set your first goal of uh, graduating out of the program. Now you're looking forward to that next goal and uh, sustaining that uh, long-lasting career. Uh, so hopefully, um, all of us have provided you with that foundation so that now you can build upon that foundation and have some amazing careers. So we just want to say, again, congratulations. So what can I say? It's a small group. We got two graduates. No, I'm just kidding. So um, the nice thing about our uh, graduating class is uh, we have 18 total graduates in this class. And uh, we're happy to say um, several of them had multiple job offers. Uh, and we have 17 that are employed. We have one um, that has uh, multiple offers, hasn't quite accepted uh, the one particular one uh, that they're looking for quite yet. Uh, so they have just some amazing opportunities. And it really shows the diligence and hard work that they've done. So uh, what I'd like to do first is uh, name, we've got 16 that aren't able to make it because they're out working. Um, so why don't I just, uh, I'll go through the names, and then maybe we could give them just one big round of applause, and then uh, we'll congratulate uh, the ones that uh, were able to make it. And I do want to say, these two do have jobs, uh, but they took the day off uh, to celebrate this uh, uh, super fantastic opportunity to share it with their parents and their family. Um, so I'll go ahead and name uh, the ones that weren't able to make it here today. Easton Anderson, Eric Aparicio, Tian Dow, Saeed Ilian, Brent Hoffman, Luke Larson, Inesh Luna, Derek McDonald, Milo Ned Nedro, Matthew Newsbaum, Haley Pierce, Tyler Sandoval, Ivan Soria, Maxwell Tate, Gleb Volkov, and Yu Nuel Zunega. So congratulations to them. All right, and our first graduate, Mr. Miguel Guzman. All right, Mr. Ethan Strobel. All So again, uh, congratulations uh, to all of our graduates, but in particular, our uh, instrumentation graduates. And we look forward to hopefully having you guys come back, your classmates come back, and uh, eventually hiring some of our future graduates. And uh, who knows, maybe you might become an instructor one day here at Perry Tech as well. So again, congratulations, everybody. Before we finalize this ceremony with the turning of the tassels, 
I would like to take this opportunity to recognize our amazing faculty. And thank you for all that you do to support our students. We are so lucky to have your talent and your dedication. Can we give them a round of applause? I'd also like to mention that most of our faculty are graduates of Perry Tech. So graduates, as you go out in industry and have been there for a while, if you feel called to come back, um, Perry is growing and chances are there'll be an opportunity for you in the future. I'd also like to recognize another special group of people who truly care about our students. And I meet with them weekly and I hear in detail the things that they're doing to keep our students in school. This is our Vice President of Academic Affairs, Nathan Hull, and our, our two associate deans, Garrett Gasling and Adam Riker. Thank you so much for what you do. And now it gives me great pleasure to ask all of our graduates to stand for the turning of the tassels. Keep in mind that this not only represents your graduation from Perry Tech, but also the turning of a new chapter in your life. If you would do me the honor, please move your tassel from the right to the left. Congratulations. And now I'd like to ask uh, our audience, friends and families, to stand as we recognize our December 2023 graduates. Thank you all for attending today and for being part of Perry Tech. Congratulations. Thank you.